Today in Matt's class, we are gonna show you how to design an awesome armored character. Today, hanging out with me is the incredible Phil Stone. Phil is an artist who works for Wizards of the Coast, among other role-playing game companies. You've mm -hmm. worked for quite a few. Has worked on projects, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Dungeons and Dragons, among other awesome, awesome, awesome games. Phil, can we design some awesome armored characters today? I thought that would be uh, that would be a riot to share with everybody. It would be a riot, Matt. Well, there's a lot of different things you can do. Let's talk about the different things you can do with armored characters. When I was a kid, I loved drawing stormtroopers, and I think one of the reasons I liked Star Wars a little bit more than drawing like superheroes, I wasn't that good at drawing muscles and stuff, but I felt like anything that was armor, like cylinders, it was just easier for me to construct like stormtroopers. So. We could uh, be designing something from like another universe, something like a stormtrooper. Throw some other ideas at me. What else would be an armored character? A dystopian Mad Max type of... Uh, Ooh. Because when I was a kid, the garbage can lid always made a great shield. Love or it. a fantastic breastplate. Love it. I'm going to say bounty hunter. I was always about Boba Fett. Like a knight. You Love know, it. Classic run-of-the-mill knight. Absolutely, like some kind of fantasy knight in shining armor or maybe not so shiny. Even like an android, you know, could be an armored character that has like some kind of like plating or something like that. I love the idea of having armor that's a little bit more almost like they could be wearing the, the skeleton of a creature. More organic. And like, yeah, but like, but it's still plating that they have that, that kind of protects them. So what I thought we would do is I'm going to draw an armored character. Phil, I want you to draw an armored character and then we are going to reveal them to each other and kind of share some tips. I think it's fantastic. All right, let's do this. To begin, I'm going to start lightly with orange. I'm going to start with the stick and I'm going to build the actual skeletal structure of my character first. This is going to help with the body language. I'm going to draw like a cool action pose. I can't wait to add all the fun shapes and like the armor and everything. But I'm going to start now by adding in the meat, and that'll help me with the blueprint of all the fun stuff I'm going to add after that. All right, so like Matt was doing, I'm just kind of going in and starting with a stick figure. I wanted to think about what kind of armor I want to do. I was kind of going with the Mad Max type of deal. You got to think of when you're doing the armor, how much movement you can actually get. So it kind of justifies like what kind of stance you're going to have. So obviously if you're wearing like a breastplate or a curious or something, you're not going to do something dramatic at your waist level because those things, obviously, if you've ever put one of those on, you don't move that well. This guy's gonna stand kind of stoically, kind of showing off his piecemeal armor where it's a little bit more organic. Like Matt was saying, put the meat in there, so we're gonna start fleshing this out a little bit. Building out his chest area here, he's kind of almost at a three-quarters pose. Putting his abs in there, I'm just kind of drawing really loose. His arm coming out here, he's gonna be showing off some kind of weapon over here. While you're doing this, you can kind of think of where you want to place your armor. Also, full disclosure, this is the first time I've ever drawn on a whiteboard. So I'm changing it a little bit and that's okay, you know, my stick figure, I liked how it was, but now that I'm adding in the meat, I'm seeing some things that I didn't like as much, so that's okay to kind of push and pull. The idea is that you're still drawing lightly at this point before you put in all of the heavy details. He's going to have like this wrist rocket launcher, but I'm trying to figure out what to do with this arm. Maybe he's activating it with this arm, so I think I need to just completely change. Maybe he activates it here, so if his hand is here. But then if I do that, I feel like if he's shooting, his arm needs to be out a little bit more, like this. Yeah, and then the arm down like that. This is a little too relaxed. It I need to like redraw this. It looks like the rocket would just kind of veer off yeah. in awkward fashion. Yeah. So I'm kind of cleaning this up a little bit. Because this shoulder's forward, I want to put the heaviest part of armor there because that will be guarding his actual weapon hand down here. We're gonna go with a classic pauldron that he kind of made at home. This shoulder pauldron's not gonna just sit on this dude. You gotta have some kind of, like, how is that staying on there? Jimmy here found some straps. I'm gonna strap it across his chest. Classic buckles. I'm a little bit happier with the setup now. Now I'm just adding in the details, and it's going to be a lot easier now that I have a blueprint of where to put all of these fun details. 
Well, I'm left-handed, so I was drawn from left to right, and that did not work out too well. So let's put some pouches on it because he's got to carry some stuff here. Okay, so I've got all of my details, but right now it kind of looks like a coloring book, so I definitely need to add in some shadows to really bring this to life and make this look more three-dimensional. I'm gonna have the light kind of coming down like this, so some of this is gonna roll into shadow over here. All right. Oh, dude. That's awesome. That's totally Mad Max. I love how large the shoulder pauldron is. And I think that's one of the great things about the whole like Mad Max universe is not everything has to be, a, like there's really no reason anyone has any business Having something this large right here. This is what he found, and he was like, that fits on my shoulder. So cool. My bounty hunter. I always appreciated that webbing on the, on the armor. I could have taken the time to wrap it around, but sometimes even if you just do it straight from a distance, it just adds in enough Ooh, Well, it's texture. Yeah. Phil, that was awesome. Super, super cool. And I hope you guys got some great juice out of that. Come back for the next video, because Phil and I are gonna give you some tips, tricks, and techniques for vehicle design and some awesome methods of transportation. Can't wait to see you guys then. Come back now.